Hi, welcome. I'm Karen, and you're watching Catching Up with Karen Mom Talk. Today, I want to be talking about uh, pregnancy swelling. I know, fun. So, with my first pregnancy, I was working up until I was 35 weeks pregnant. And, you know, go ahead, ask me, what was it like working while I was pregnant? It sucked. <laughs> my bosses knew I was pregnant when I was two weeks pregnant. Ezra was planned and um, Ezra being my son. Um, so they knew I was pregnant by two weeks and to them it didn't really seem real and to me it really didn't seem real up until I got a belly. So they weren't super uber careful with me, they weren't worried where they would bump me. So um, I think for, for the most part that's one of the things that kind of sucked about um, being pregnant because I knew there were certain things I shouldn't have been doing that you know really didn't that the bosses really didn't think about by the time they noticed they're like oh hey she's really actually pregnant and you know we should limit how much she carries what she does I was already five or six months pregnant and that's when my pregnancy swelling started and I was in pain. The job required me to be on my feet and moving around for uh, eight hours, for the whole eight hours. The only time I could sit down were for my 15 minute breaks and my 30 minute lunches. Uh, after my first trimester and my morning sickness went away, I started gaining weight like crazy. It's like the weight didn't know, like, hey, slow down. Uh, so every, it's like I would gain a, like a pound every week. It was crazy. By the time I would get used to the weight, I would have already gained another pound and my feet were so angry with me. And it just, it sucked. So that's my personal experience with the swelling. Now let's go into the fun stuff, the information and why you swell. So typically moms don't start swelling until after roughly around the fifth month. You can really honestly start swelling at any point in your pregnancy, but it's com it commonly starts at five months or once you hit the third trimester and it only gets worse from there. You can get bigger as you get closer to your, to your delivery date. And the swelling, the normal swelling is called edema. It can be experienced in the hands, face, legs, ankles, and feet. Yeah, all the exterior parts of our body. So head, hands, ankles, feet. This happens because during pregnancy, your body's gonna produce 50% more blood for you and your baby. And it's gonna produce more body fluids in order to meet the needs of the growing baby. So these extra fluids account for only 25% of your weight, roughly, depending on how much um, water you retain. And for me, that was a lot. I'll probably input pictures to show you how I looked like a cherry. I look so plump. Uh, when you start swelling, at, you can start swelling at any point in your pregnancy, but like I was saying, it's commonly seen in the fifth month and it can increase throughout your third trimester. This is weight that you can and probably will lose after you deliver. After you deliver, you're obviously dropping that, that baby weight. So my baby was eight pounds. That's already eight pounds I lost that same day. And then it's all the water weight or what I call water weight. Uh, and I wanna talk about the reasons why we swell. So there are a couple of reasons why moms start to swell. Reason number one is your growing uterus. Your uterus is growing and you have so much weight in your belly area. And that growing uterus puts weight on one of your veins located on your right side. And that impacts the return of blood to your heart. That's your circulation. And that's from your feet to your heart. It puts weight on your inferior vena cava. That's again located on the right side. Because of the gravity when we're standing up, blood has absolutely zero trouble reaching our feet. But it's an uphill battle for the blood to go back up into our hearts to reoxygenate. Our reason number two why 
you swell are your changing hormones. So we already know your body is flooded with, with hormones. And it's this, you know similar hormones that keep our hair from falling out when we're pregnant and give us these beautiful luscious nails and hair. This hormone really causes our body to retain more fluid. The extra fluid retention is needed to soften the body in order for it to grow as it needs to as the baby develops. All this extra fluid helps your pelvic joints and tissues by helping them open for delivery. So that's where all the extra fluid is going. You have these like, I almost wanna call them little sacks in between your bones with fluid that keeps them, keeps them lubricated. Uh, so that's, that's a fun fact. Other things that can affect whether you swell a lot or not is summertime heat. You know, whether you're dehydrated or not. You need, you really need to keep up that hydration. Standing for prolonged periods of time and long days of activity. And again, that's because when we're standing up, gravity pulls our, our blood to our feet. And that blood struggles to go back up into our heart because of all that weight. A diet low in potassium. Potassium is an electrolyte. And you know, you, all, you always see about electrolytes. You know, Gatorade has it and water infused with electrolytes is important. Do we really know what it does? So we can drink water and we could flood our system with water, but electrolytes is what allows our body to absorb that hydration. So if our body is thrown off and we don't have enough electrolytes, then all we're doing is flooding our system. We really need to keep up on electrolytes and one of those really important ones is potassium. And you will notice when you're pregnant, you'll get those really bad Charlie horses. For people who don't know what Charlie horses are, it's really, really bad leg cramps. Oh my goodness. You have no idea how many times I begged my husband to just cut off my legs. It wasn't until I actually started um, Mentioning this to my doctor that she gave me a couple of tips Which I will tell you in later in this video Now another type of reason is uh, high levels of caffeine cons consumption So for all of us coffee or tea or soda drinkers caffeine There is a reason why um, they ask us to lower our dose of caffeine Not you don't always have to cut it out cold turkey um, you can talk about your doctor. You can talk to your doctor about that. Um, but yeah, I'll explain later why. And another reason, high levels of sodium, AKA salt intake. Salt retains fluid. I don't know if you've ever tried, you know, I remember seeing my cousin would try to fly in water and then he would put it in under salt and then the fly would come back to life and zoom away. Really what that is, is the salt absorbed out all the water that the fly had um, drowned in. Salt does that in our body. So it's in our body, it's gonna absorb all that fluid and it's gonna keep it inside of us. Now, how do we re reduce this normal swelling? I am emphasizing normal for a reason. Um, it'll be at the end of the episode where I talk about what is not normal swelling. So, to help reduce normal swelling, I recommend wearing a maternity belt. This really, what it does is it helps shift the weight from our abdomen to our shoulders. That's gonna help with the circulation. And wearing compression socks to help promote better, cir better circulation at your feet. Um, compression socks, um, you can find them in the travel section or the diabetic section. Um, because people with diabetes do so, sometimes struggle with um, circulation that they need to wear compression socks. I recommend wearing comfortable or bigger shoes to atone for the swelling. Uh, that was one of the big, bigger issues when I was working was having to buy new shoes. My feet did double, triple in size. It was insane. Uh, so you are, you might, I, you might need to buy new shoes but I definitely do recommend getting more or using more comfortable shoes for when you are walking and when you're on your feet. Reducing salt intake. 
You have to reduce your salt intake to reduce uh, water retention. Again, that's because the salt retains water. You want to avoid processed foods like lunched meats and canned foods. They tend to be high in trans fat, which can lead to the swelling or the edema. You want to reduce caffeine use. Caffeine and a diet high in simple sugars like soda can lead to water retention. You're also gonna want to eat and drink things that are high in potassium to help keep your body chemically balanced. And again, this is for you to be able to really experience that hydration. So bananas, sweet potato, kidney beans, avocado, and coconut water. Those are all high in potassium. Make sure you also increase hydration. Increasing hydration is gonna help you clear your system of the excess fluid by flushing it out by way of peeing. I know, my doctor was like, you have to increase hydration. I was like, but isn't that counterintuitive? I'm gonna be drinking more water and just retaining it all. But that's how it works. The more water you drink, the more you pee, and you're gonna pee out that excess fluid. Now let's talk about swelling that is not normal. So any swelling that comes on suddenly can be a sign of preeclampsia. So when should you worry if it's preeclampsia? Again, if the swelling is sudden, if you notice your hands and your face start to swell like a lot, if you have a headache that won't go away with Tylenol water or sleep, blurry vision or a change in vision, so sometimes you'll see like little dots around, that's also when you should worry. So when the swelling comes with chest pains, shortness of breath or continuous coughing, if one leg is noticeably more swollen than the other, if you're experiencing any type of pain accompanied with the swelling, high uh, blood pressure, you, you'll you notice your doctors are always gonna be checking your blood pressure when you go in for, uh, for your appointments. And they're also gonna be checking your urine. This reason is because another sign of preeclampsia is protein in the urine. At 25 weeks, by at least by 25 weeks, your doctor should be testing your urine to check for protein or signs of preeclampsia. If you experience one or more of these symptoms, I highly recommend you call your doctor immediately. Why is this? Because preeclampsia can cause distress to the baby and it can also lead to preterm pregnant, the uh, preterm, sorry, preterm uh, labor and your doctors might have to go in and stop that. And they're gonna have to really assess and talk to you about how to safely deliver the baby to ensure that both of you guys leave the pregnancy healthy. For me, that was one of the big things. I had preeclampsia by the time I uh, delivered and I had zero idea. I had no idea that I had preeclampsia. I didn't even know that was a thing or what it was. I assumed that my sudden swelling was normal and like I was saying, I was in so much pain, I couldn't even get out of my car and I thought all of that was normal. So I, you know, I didn't mention it to my doctor and I just like brushed it off. Um, so by the time I was 32 weeks pregnant, uh, I started contracting. I didn't know why. So once I reached 35 weeks, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm not gonna overexert myself. I'm just gonna go lay in my bed. And this is all because I almost made myself go into labor because of all the work I was putting in. And so by the time I was ready to pop, I was, what, 39 weeks and five days? I was almost at my 40 week mark. Uh, I had preeclampsia. They checked my blood pressure. It was mad high. Checked my urine. They checked everything and they're like, uh, okay, well you're here now and this is gonna happen. And it did happen. I want you guys to remember that again, if there are any sudden changes, it doesn't necessarily have to be with the swelling, but anything that to you does not seem or feel normal, speak to a professional, talk to a doctor. That's what they're there for. They are there to help you and baby remain safe. So thank you for watching my video on pregnancy swelling. Goodbye.